Hi everyone, I'm Rob Shapiro from Fitchburg State University and today we're going to be talking about the BACB's 5th edition task list item G19, Use Contingency Contracting. So what is a contingency contract? Well, it's a document that specifies a contingent relationship between the completion of a target behavior and the delivery of a reward. Uh, it's important to know that it actually is a document. It's got to be written. The document specifies how two or more people will behave, uh, and those two or more people include the person expected to engage in the target behavior and the person who will be delivering the reward, and it must be in writing. So that's a, another key element, is that it's not enough for a contract just to talk about what the, the, the learner is expected to do. It also has to specify what the person who is delivering the reward is going to do as well. So a contingency contract component can include the task, who will perform the task, what that task is, when it will be performed, and to what degree it must be performed. It will also include information about the reward to be delivered, which can include who is going to judge whether the task was completed, what is the actual reward, when will that reward be delivered, and how much of it will be delivered. Um, and it also will include a task record, which is having a place to record uh, that, that the task has been completed to mark down instances of it being completed, which can help serve as a place for progress to be monitored. Cooper outlines several steps involved in developing contingency contracts. Typically, it starts with holding a meeting, uh, which is going to include all of the interested stakeholders, including the person whose behavior is being targeted for change. Uh, and in that meeting, there can be a discussion of how contracts work, um, as well as to, uh, to be able to get buy-in um, from the person who's being targeted for behavior change, as well as any other stakeholders about what's going to be taking place. Uh, once that meeting has been held, there's the completion of what's called List A, which basically is related to the person whose behavior is being targeted for change, and it includes a list of things, of, of positive things that are already being done by that person, as well as additional things that are not currently being done, but that may be targeted for change through the use of the contingency contract. Interestingly, Cooper also talks about com the completion of list B, which are things that are already being done by other group members and additional things that can be done. And this is kind of cool because it's, it's about normalizing um, and, and not setting the expectation that it's just the person that we're targeting for behavior change, that they're not doing anything they're supposed to be doing and there's all these other things they could be doing, right? This is about looking to other people that are in the environment and saying, okay, what things are they doing and what are the things that they might be able to do as well? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we would also develop a contingency contract for that other person. It's just about acknowledging um, that, that uh, it's worthwhile to take a look at what someone's peer group might be doing to evaluate what kind of behavior change might actually be necessary. Uh, then, once these first two lists have been developed, there's the completion of list C, which would be potential rewards for completing the contracted tasks. Basically, what are things that the, um, the learner may want to earn, may be willing to work for, um, for completing some of the things that are identified in the contingency contracting process. And then finally, writing and signing the contract, which would contain all of the components that were previously listed, okay? So, um, you know, who is going to do what, to what degree, when are they gonna do it, um, what is going to be provided for reinforcement, how is it gonna be judged whether the person has earned that reward, when is the reward gonna be delivered, how much of the reward is going to be delivered. So all of these components are gonna be included in our contingency contract. And the signing is a critical component too. Uh, to, to have a true contract, the person whose behavior is being targeted for change signs it like they would sign a contract, I agree to doing this, but also the person who's gonna be judging and delivering reinforcement and anyone else who's expected to play a role in the implementation of the contingency contract signs it as well to basically acknowledge, I agree, I'm going to do the things that this contract is calling for. Finally, just some guidelines anytime that a, uh, a contingency contract is being considered. 
First of all, you want to make sure to write a fair contract with the behavior commensurate with the, with the reward. You want to make sure that what's being asked of the learner isn't so far above or so much more effortful than what's being offered as a reward because it, it just won't be effective. You want to make sure that they, they map on to each other and it's legitimate to expect someone to engage in the, uh, uh, the requisite amount of behavior change for what the reward is that's being offered. Um, second, you want to write a clear contract so everyone knows what is expected. Again, what exactly is the learner expected to do and what exactly is going to come the learner's way as a result of doing that? Um, who's going to help them be able to achieve that? Third, you want to write an honest contract that all parties are willing to follow. And the, the, the default way to think about this is that you want to make sure that if the learner does what they agreed to do, that the, uh, the other parties are going to follow through and provide the reinforcement, right? That's really important. But it's also important to keep in mind that if the learner doesn't follow through, the other parties have to be willing to withhold that reward and not give it because they feel bad or because they're afraid or just to avoid bigger problems, right? Um, so we want to write an honest contract that everyone's going to be willing to follow. It's good to build in several layers of rewards to a contingency contract, including bonus rewards. And we can think about this as, okay, we've got certain guidelines that we expect the learner to follow to access whatever the reward is in the contract. What if the learner goes above and beyond? What if they do more than was expected? Is there some way that we can reward them for having done that? In some cases, we may want to consider a response cost contingency. What do we do if the target is not achieved? Is it sufficient to just withhold whatever the reward is, or does there have to be something more? And we may determine that down the road. Um, next, we want to post the contract in a visible place, which, um, number one, it reminds everyone of the contract, but it also, if we've got our data collection as part of that, it lets all parties see the progress towards the terminal behavior, which can be really nice to be able to gauge success. Uh, next, we want to keep an open mind uh, and be willing to renegotiate or change the contract if either party is consistently unhappy to maintain buy-in, right? If we have a situation where the learner is like, yeah, I'm not happy with what I'm getting as a reward. That's not enough for me. Uh, it's not going to be an effective contract and we, we might need to revise what that reward is. Or on the flip side, we might have the other stakeholders who say, you know what, I'm giving this reward and I really don't think we're holding this person to a high enough standard, this learner. We can, we can raise the stakes a little bit. We might have to go back and renegotiate that contract um, the same way that, that we might renegotiate any contract down the road. Um, and then finally, as with, uh, as with most behavior analytic procedures, we want to have a game plan for terminating that contract once independent and proficient performance is achieved. You know, always having a mind towards how do we fade our procedure, how do we look to remove it and have the natural contingencies of reinforcement in the environment uh, maintain expected behavior.